Today we're going to uh, plant this uh, misty blueberry. Uh, as you can see, I have a raised bed. Um, that's because my soil drainage here is incredibly poor. And so uh, I had to get that up above the soil line so that uh, during the winter time, this plant, uh, the blueberry plants, won't starve for oxygen. So uh, we have a nice acidic planting mix in here right now, but I'm going to beef it up a little bit before I plant in here. So one of the big problems with growing blueberries in the ground is going to be definitely pH, soil pH. pH has to be somewhere between about 5.5 and say 6 uh, for a blueberry to really thrive. And so trying to get that in some soils and some climates is real, real difficult. Um, definitely because your water, your water alone, the thing that you're going to be putting on regularly, it could be running as high as say 8 and 9. Uh, for pH, where your pH needs to be down around 5 to 6. Now if you're unsure of the pH of your soil, I'd suggest you do a soil test. I like my hole to be a little bit more on the, let's call it a inverted cone shape. And I'm going to make a little mound to the center of the hole to elevate this plant up. Here are some key components we're going to mix together to improve our soil when we put the plant back in. And uh, they are an acid planting mix for azaleas, camellias, and rhododendrons, and then also a sphagnum peat. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take about 50% of the soil we took out of this bed, and we're going to mix it with about 30% of the acid planting mix, and about another 20% of that peat moss. And we're going to mix it up into here all together, and that's what we're going to plant this blueberry in to get it started. All right, here we have our tapered hole. Um, the sides taper into the center, um, and we don't dig a hole that's just straight round, and that's simply because the uh, straight round holes tend to have uh, glazed sides, which um, cause water not to be able to permeate into the root ball real, real easy, or during the winter time when it's raining, it causes the water to not be able to exit out into the surrounding soils easily to get away from the root to allow it to breathe. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our mix, we're going to make a mound right in the center of the hole. So kind of peek up that center, make a nice little flat landing there, just like that. And pack it down nice. All right. Now we're going to take our blueberry plant out and we're going to inspect it, inspect the roots to see if there's any root bounding. And in this case, I don't see much at all, but I'm going to reach in there. Whoops. I'm just going to pull break that root up just a little bit at the base there before I stick it in the ground here. Alright, there we go. Set it right on top like that. Now, I'm going to take, we're going to backfill with all of our planting roots here. Now, I always like to make sure that it's a little bit mounded up above, above the soil line when I first put it in the ground because there will be some settling. So as you can see here, you know, I'm going to be a little bit high, but that's okay. And you want to keep the crown cool. It's going to be the soil line in the can should be the soil line that remains when you're done planting. And I like to get my tamping stick and go ahead and pack that soil down around that newly planted plant real well. Get all that air pockets out. Spread this out nicely on the top here. Keeping that crown free so that we don't cause any kind of rot right around here around the crown. So you don't ever want that crown covered. Because this is a bed in the focal point, I really like to use a more decorative type of mulch. And so I'm going to use this quarter inch pathway bark. This is really beautiful stuff does a great job of providing plenty of porosity, air movement to the plants underneath, but at the same time keeps those weeds down, keeps the root surface root cool, and blueberries are really surface rooted. I'm just going to start putting a bunch on because I'm probably going to redo this whole bit. Um, keep the crown exposed, so you know I keep a, about an inch or two away from the crown, and then move my mulch. You know, in, in this case, I'm going to have right around maybe two to three inches on top of this plant right here. So now that we're planted up uh, in the ground, 
Our two concerns are going to be to maintain the pH of the soil, and of course that's going to be combated by the pH of our water. Um, acid fertilizer will help that a lot. So I like to feed the plant once in the spring, and once again as it starts to go into the uh, later part of the summertime into the fall. So last, we'll hook our drip irrigation in here so that these plants get plenty of moisture during the season and so that we have them on a clock, on a timer, so that we can determine how much water we're putting on exactly. Then when you're all done, water the plant in real, real good to get it started.